This is the second video of the tip series and today we look at how to link parameters together. So, let's get ready! We start as usual with our GeoNode and here we create two basic objects. For example a plane and a cube. In order to create the shape we want, we need to change different properties inside the node. The nice thing in Houdini is that different parameter channels can be linked together. In this case, we want to have a square grid with the same amount of rows and columns and we can link them together so that we don't need to type the same values twice. To do so, right click on the parameter you want to copy, select copy parameter and here we can right click and select paste relative references. What appears is a channel function, CH, which stands for channel and inside the brackets asks for the channel path, which in our case is inside our own node and therefore only the name of the channel is needed. For the cube, we can also link the cube scale with the center position of the cube itself and dividing it by 2 in order to let it stand on the ground. You see how not only linking parameters are possible, but also mathematical operations to and between different parameters. Here for example, we want to have the cube size always as big as one of the grid tiles. Simply take the length of the edge and divide it by its rows minus 1 to maintain the tiles number. Perfect! The next step we do is to scatter the cubes on each face of the grid. To extract the center point of each face, we use the extract centroid node. It asks for a piece attribute called name, which in our case should contain an individual number for each face. These faces are stored as primitives and the value we need is the primitive number. Let's set up an attribute create And this value is the prim number, which is written at prim num. Now that we have our center points, we use a copy to points node to scatter the cubes. Looking back, we see how we can change, for example, the grid size, and everything automatically adapts parametrically with it. When you build up a script in Houdini, it is often very useful to maintain the overview about the main parameters you want to change later. For this, the null node can be very handy. Drop down the null node and name it main parameters. At the moment, the node has no parameters in it, but we can create them. Go in the gear wheel icon and edit parameters. Here, we will create new channels, which we can link to our nodes in the script. In the null node, I would like to control the division's number and the size of the grid. For the division, we need an integer. You can simply drag and drop it in the folder. Give it a name and a label. And set a range. For the size, we take a float, so that the value doesn't rely on whole numbers. And also here, label it accordingly. So now we can find the parameters in this panel, link them back to the grid. Through the null node, we can have different parameters referring to various nodes in our script, allowing us to have a good control of it. Now, to bring it to a three-dimensional form, we use a copy node.
Here we can link the amount of copies with the number of faces, which corresponds to the grid's division minus 1. And the applied translation is the size divided by the faces of a row. So this looks good. To bring a variety into our cubes for the further animation, we use an attribute noise node. The attribute we want to create is B scale. Set the values accordingly. And now we remove the translate values in the cube node so that it looks better. To conclude, we animate the noise by offsetting its pattern by the time passed in the timeline. Write $t, which stands for the time, and hit play. Further, you can also play a bit with the values. Conclude the step with another null node and name it out. Going to the geo node, I want to show you a case which I encountered often. By moving one object around the scene on the geo level and by linking its geometry with an object merge in a new geo node, we see that the position is not correct and this is because the transformation occurs on the geo level. To fix it, you can either create a transform node and linking the geo node's parameters to the transform node by copying them. In this case, you see that you can copy all values at once by right clicking on the parameter's name. Or the second option would be to paste these values into a new geo node itself. You see how parameters can not only be linked at the same level but also in between them. The important thing here is to notice how the path is written. Two dots followed by a slash, which stands for jumping out one level. First out of the node itself, then out to the geo level. Now I will show you three more cases of linking attributes. We move on with our setup by creating a transformation of our cube by an attribute blur node. Make sure to set the cube to mesh. And now we can use a blend node to transform it. I would like to have this transformation applied on our cubes based on a sphere's intersection with them. To extract the distance between a sphere and each cube, we use a point warp node. Drop down a sphere and a point warp. And in here we need a distance node. To measure the distance between the sphere's center and the cube's positions, which are represented by the points. As the blend node takes only values between 0 and 1, we need to fit our distance values between this range. For this we use a fit node and we export these values as a new attribute with a bind export node. Name it blend and set it to float. We can now try to link the sphere's position with the distance input. But as soon as we try to keyframe it, we get this weird error message in our VOP node. In order to fix this, you need to promote a parameter on the sub level. Middle mouse click on our parameter and set promote parameter. Now when we link it again, we see that it works. Do the same for the max value of the fit node and link it with the sphere's size.
Each point stores an individual blend value. The problem we have here is that our blend node will only have one constant output. In order to link our blend attribute so that for each point the blend node outputs the geometry accordingly, we need to replace our copy to points node with a copy stamp. This node works like a for each loop and allows us to link the individual values to the blend node. Create a stamp. Our value is add blend and as variable we can take the same name. In our blend node you can address this value by the stamp function. Type stamp and in brackets we specify first the path, the name of the variable which is blend and conclude with zero. Perfect. With a ramp in our WAP node, you can further adjust the values. Drop the ramp, give it a name and a label, set it to spline, and jump out to adjust the parameters. As last step, we have a look to how parameters can be linked inside a Wrangle node. Drop down our attribute Wrangle node and here we start by creating a color attribute, which is CD. Type add CD equals set and in brackets specify the color value we want. In my case it's 100 to have a red color. Now we want to change the red value accordingly to the blend transformation. For this create a new float variable, which we place in our color vector for the red value. What we want is that elements within the affection field become dark and that the red tone of the whole geometry becomes additionally brighter and darker depending on the size of the affection field. For this we want to fit the effect radius of our blend which corresponds to the sphere scale parameter in between 0 and our bind attribute. We start by typing fit and in brackets we type first the channel we want to link. The sphere scale is a float channel. Type ch and f for float and in brackets and quotation marks we start by typing our path. Double dots and a slash to dive out of our node and then sphere slash scale. Next we need our min and max values in which the value should be remapped. In our case it is zero and for the max value we can take our size parameter of the whole composition which is stored in our null node. Here again chf for a float channel and then the path to the size parameter of the null node. As last we need to specify the values in which it should be fitted in, which are add blend And zero. So now elements in the faction field are darker and as more the radius grows also the whole cube's color turns darker. So I hope you enjoyed the video and if you want to stay updated with the newest tutorials make sure to subscribe. I hope to see you next time and ciao!